So, the video I wanted to make today was going to be, well, is going to be, it's not past tense, um, about my bike mount that I made a while ago. Um, I actually made it long before I decided to film this, but what happened recently is I went for, I went to go for a bike ride. I set it up probably a couple weeks ago and um, it broke right there. I don't know if you can see that, but since it's broken, yeah, you can see where it's splitting. Um, I've decided that I need to reprint the brackets, and I'm using six walls instead of three, which is the default for the high-quality print on the Dremel software that I use. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be reprinting those, and I figured. It, since I'm going to have to take it apart anyways, I could go over exactly what it is. And uh, also, you know, if you tend to, if you have <laughs> the same uh, phone case as me, uh, I will make the files available for download on Thingiverse. So uh, let's get this thing off of here and we will go over exactly how I printed it. So that is supposed to be connected happily there. Alright, so for the sake of uh, time and just ease of filming things, I've just decided to shoot this outside because the garage is shitty uh, as far as lighting. Um, but yeah, here it is. And you can see that it's a little bit broken. So this piece is supposed to attach to there and it's all supposed to be held together kind of like a pipe clamp. But since that snapped, it's no longer doing its job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reprint it with uh, several additional layers um, and I'm gonna use a different filament because this is my first time using this filament for this, uh, this specific brand. And I just, I get the feeling that it's not as strong as what I'm used to using for this kind of stuff. So I've swapped out the filament. I'm doing additional walls and hopefully the new one will hold up a little bit better than this. So what I think happened is I think I put my bike away in the garage after I set this all up and tested it and it was fine. And I just, I think that the ambient temperature of the garage, uh, which tends to be a little bit humid, because, uh, like I said, the roof uh, is leaking and stuff in a prior, earlier video. Um, so I think that just ambient temperature with this, the quality of this filament just caused it to just kind of um, e contract uh, by the looks of it. Over here it looks like maybe it contracted away a little and that caused the whole thing to snap apart. So I'm going to be replacing this. But uh, since I got it apart, I figured I'd walk everybody through exactly what I did for my design here. So my old phone was the uh, iPhone 6 Plus, which was big. And the, the mount that I created before, because I've created a Pokemon Go mount, which you can watch up there. Um, and... I, I was originally using it to play Pokemon Go, but in the last couple of years, I've started liking to bike um, with the music just playing from my phone directly. That way I don't have to have headphones on. That way I could be a little bit more alert about my surrounding. Um, so I made another one when I upgraded to the iPhone 10, and I have this giant case for it. So this, this 3D print will only work if you have this case, which is the OtterBox Defender or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty bulky dude, um, but I like, you know, my phone's not smashing to oblivion when I drop them. So it's printed in two pieces. You can see the seam right there. And the, the cradle here, this part is what I refer to as the cradle. So the part that holds your phone, the part that your phone slips into, is printed in two pieces. And then this piece here, is actually held in with a bolt and a washer. You can see right there. 
And so, since I'm gonna be taking this apart, I can just pop this off. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. So, the bolt sits in there, which is a hex uh, groove in the surface of the piece that's meant specifically for this bolt to slot into. So, just kind of pop it off. And this hole right here is specifically meant for the ratchet to be able to fit inside. So that might be a problem if you don't have a ratchet and you're interested in making this part. But it's got a whoop. it's got a nut and a washer that fit in there. And hopefully I can get it off. Oh, right there. Okay, yeah, thought I broke my bolt for a second. So, you can see in there, in the divot, which this post slots into, I made a repeatable cylinder shape that then I used this piece to cut out this exact copy on this part of the model. So, I actually used this piece to create this indent in there. And this is all using Simplified 3D, um, which, I'm kind of, I'm thinking I might try to move away from in the future because I believe that there's some CAD software that can do more intricate things that I'm interested in doing. Um, but yeah, so these posts on the top, on the top here slot into there to create registration so that the part, so like, you know, like you don't have this going on, it can't turn or anything. It's always going to be fixed in that exact position as soon as you get it clamped down with a bolt it'll bite down onto these posts in the, to these holes and it'll be it'll be good it won't it won't twist around on you so that's uh, that's pretty much it that that's the whole part and there's two pegs that are printed that go up into this back cradle part so I just kind of tap those on with a rubber mallet and that holds this whole second part on to the base here so that's pretty much it it's four parts um, two parts for the bracket two parts for the cradle and it all fastens together with just hardware um, so i will be back in just a second when we are done printing the new parts and yeah that's it <laughs> All right, so here we are uh, a couple days later because the weather's been terrible and I wasn't sure how I wanted to finish this video, so I decided I would just do uh, a quick recording, show you guys the outcome, and go over the files uh, that I made. So here it is. It's all done. So this black material is what I decided to use to try this time around, and we'll see how it works out. Hopefully it doesn't break again. If it does, I'm going to have to rethink my whole design for the bracket part at least. But it's done and it's on there and it's uh, it's got the, the bolt and everything and I already put it all together. So since I did all that off camera, I figured I would show you guys the files um, and how I set up the build. So let me just go over to that. Okay, so here we are, and we got my whole project laid out in 123D design. Um, and you can kind of see the way everything's set up. So, I have several versions of the top bracket here because when you use them to cut out the thing here, the cutout where I where I set it all up, you uh, you need to use that bracket to do it and in the process it destroys the bracket so I always made sure I had several just in case when I did the cutout one of them got destroyed so you can see how everything's set up here I have I did the cutout and then I kind of put uh, fillet, fillet, fillets I don't know <laughs> fillets I guess it's called in the application um, I put fillets on all the edges so that they kind of had the roundedness to them to help kind of guide everything in to the slot instead of like it just being 
the hard edge 90 degree um, so I did that I'm not really sure how much of a difference that ultimately made um, because some, sometimes depending on on how much of an impact it had on the file the three uh, the the building software uh, that you upload everything to in Dremel sometimes ignores um, the slicer that's the way I was looking for <laughs> the slicer will ignore certain things if they're not uh, impactful enough so you won't really notice them in the final print so I can't remember how how much of this actually got got kept uh, for these slight things but that was the idea behind it and then I have the same thing going on up here with these pegs so this is the cradle and I built it in two pieces just so I could print it properly without any need for any shitty support so the top part slots onto the bottom part using these rods here and I rounded off the rods uh, you know, uh, the pegs whatever you want to call them uh, I rounded them off so that they could make their way into the slots a little bit easier so it kind of guide them in ease them in there and then I just kind of tap this top part onto the bottom with uh, a rubber mallet so it worked out pretty well there is a little bit of a a gap so like it's not the perfect solution because I just you get to a point where you have a hard time getting it on there and you probably can't even really tell that well on camera but uh, they're they're like you can see see light through a little bit and it's it's n in no way a big deal but it's like one of those things that the perfectionist uh, the perfectionist in me gets bothered by so that's that go away notification. I'll have to remember to turn that off next time I try to record something like this. Um, and yeah, like that's, that's pretty much the file. That's all there is to it. So like you, you pop a bolt in the center piece here, um, which ugh, connects to the back of the post here and you put a bolt in there and that snaps that part onto the base. Um, and it, it feels like it works out pretty well. It feels good to me. Like I said, the only problems with these files may be the uh, wings here for the brackets snapping uh, if you apply too much pressure. And again, this is something that would have to be modified and uh, changed based on your bike as well. That's, that's why I don't really feel like I need to make these files available so far. Like I said, I am uploading these ones and they will be available in the comments down below. But I don't, not everybody's going to have this same size post that I mount up to. So that, that might be a factor for everybody. And then it only works if you have this very specific case that I also have that I designed around. Um, so I'm not sure how many people will ever use this file <laughs> because it is very specific. And I'm not sure anyone's going to want to go through the work to modify it. Uh, but the reason I decided to do this video is because it is a, it is a design, and um, I'm not gonna say it's it's the perfect design, but it's it's the best one I came up with so far, and I really I'm really like it, and I'm proud of it. Um, and I figure you know if somebody else did want to make this kind of bike mount for their phone, uh, so that they could you know play Pokemon Go while riding their bike, or just like listen to things while they're biking with it right there instead of having headphones in. Um, you know, like maybe it'll inspire someone else to make something. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cut the video there. That is everything I pretty much wanted to say. Um, and I need to get this edited because, uh, I know I said I, I wasn't going to put up regular videos, but I'm trying, I'm going to try my best to kind of get Wednesday as the day I'm uploading right now, uh, for a while. We'll see how it goes. Again, no promises, <laughs> but, uh, but that, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. So, um, I guess that's all I wanted to say. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.